The midday sun scorches the earth in America's dry heartlands. The soil cracks like parchment beneath the feet of a seasoned farmer surveying his fields, eyes squinting at the horizon, wondering what will thrive this season, sorghum or corn. This is not just a simple agricultural choice. It's a decision shaped by decades of experience, water scarcity, climate unpredictability, and the relentless demand for food production. In these arid zones where every drop of rain counts and every harvest tells a story, choosing the right crop can mean the difference between a season of reward or one of ruin. Corn has long been the crown jewel of American agriculture. With its golden kernels and towering stalks, it dominates not only fields but also markets, feedlots, and fuel tanks. Corn is synonymous with abundance. Its yield potential, when nurtured with adequate water, fertile soil, and sunshine, is unrivaled. Farmers have grown up planting corn, inherited its practices, and passed them down like family tradition. It is deeply embedded in the agricultural identity of the nation. But corn, as majestic as it may be, is thirsty. It guzzles water like a marathon runner gulping down electrolyte-laced sports drinks. In regions where water is abundant, this isn't a major issue. But in drylands, from the high plains to parts of the southwest, corn begins to show its weakness. Its leaves curl, its ears shrink, and its stalks surrender to the stress of heat and dryness. Irrigation helps, but pumping water isn't always feasible or sustainable. It's expensive, environmentally taxing, and increasingly limited due to declining aquifers and stricter water regulations. Enter sorghum. At first glance, it's easy to underestimate. Shorter. Thicker. A little more rugged. But don't be fooled. Sorghum is a quiet warrior. Its roots dig deep into the earth, searching for moisture in places other crops abandon. It's patient. It waits out the heat. While corn sulks under the sun, sorghum soldiers on, unbothered by the sting of drought. It doesn't just survive, it produces. In the driest years, when rainfall vanishes and irrigation pumps sit idle, sorghum stands proud. Its grain heads fill out when corn struggles to tassel. It was bred in tough lands, cultivated for centuries in arid parts of Africa and Asia, and it brings that hardy legacy to American soil. Farmers who once dismissed it as a secondary crop are taking notice. The reason? Consistency. Corn may yield more in perfect conditions, but how often do perfect conditions appear in places plagued by water scarcity? Sorghum doesn't offer promises based on perfection. It delivers results even when the skies don't. And for the dryland farmer, that reliability is worth its weight in gold. It isn't just water efficiency that makes sorghum shine. It's resilient to heat, wind, and even certain pests. When temperatures climb above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, corn's pollination suffers dramatically. Sorghum, on the other hand, takes the heat in stride. It keeps developing, keeps maturing. This temperature resilience offers farmers a powerful ally in a world that's getting hotter by the year. And then there's the question of inputs. Corn demands. It wants nitrogen-rich fertilizer, frequent herbicide applications, and sometimes fungicides, too. It's a high-maintenance crop, and in drylands, maintenance means cost. Sorghum, meanwhile, is modest. It requires less nitrogen. Its dense canopy helps shade out weeds, reducing the need for chemical intervention. This not only saves money but makes sorghum an attractive option for those leaning into regenerative or sustainable practices. Let's talk economics. A cornfield might produce more bushels per acre in ideal years, but in dry years, those numbers plunge. A failed corn crop is more than a disappointment, it's a financial blow. Sorghum, while it might not reach corn's record-breaking yields, offers steadier returns. It's the dependable workhorse that keeps the farm afloat during harsh seasons. For many producers, especially those with limited irrigation or none at all, it's becoming a strategic choice. That said, corn's dominance isn't just about yield. It has deep roots in the supply chain. 
Ethanol plants, livestock feedlots, and food processors are all tuned to corn. There's infrastructure, subsidies, and long-standing contracts. Switching from corn to sorghum isn't just a change of seed. It's a shift in the entire system. And yet, as climate pressures mount, the system itself is beginning to adapt. Ethanol producers are exploring sorghum-based fuel. Cattle feeders recognize its nutritional value. Food companies are tapping into the ancient grain movement, promoting sorghum as a gluten-free, nutrient-dense alternative. Farmers are practical people. They don't change course easily. But they do adapt when the numbers and the seasons compel them. Conversations at grain elevators and local diners now include sorghum not just as a rotation crop, but as a primary player. And younger farmers, those taking over from their parents and grandparents, are especially tuned into the sustainability equation. They see water as a finite resource, not an infinite one. For them, sorghum isn't just an option. It's a lifeline. There are, of course, nuances. Some regions still favor corn due to market accessibility or soil compatibility. Others mix both crops strategically, planting sorghum on the least irrigated ground and reserving corn for their best fields. Crop rotation involving both can even improve overall soil health, breaking pest cycles and diversifying risk. It's not about choosing a single winner every time. It's about reading the land and planning smartly. Technology also plays a role in this evolution. Seed companies are developing hybrids of sorghum that push yield ceilings higher, resist lodging, and improve disease resistance. Drones and precision AG tools help monitor fields more effectively, guiding when and where to irrigate, fertilize, or harvest. And with improved data, farmers can now compare sorghum and corn performance field by field, year by year, rainstorm by drought. The farmer who once squinted into the horizon now studies satellite imagery and soil moisture sensors. But he still remembers the feeling of a good harvest, and the sting of a failed one. He knows that not every field is suited for corn anymore. The world is shifting. The climate is less predictable. And with every passing year, sorghum starts to look less like a fallback and more like a frontrunner. And yet, this isn't a story of replacement. It's a story of realignment. Corn will remain vital to American agriculture. Its place is secure in regions with adequate water, rich soils, and infrastructure to support it. But in the drier landscapes, those that test the limits of traditional farming, sorghum offers a compelling path forward. Not as a backup plan, but as a primary solution. The wind sweeps across the plains again, rippling through two different fields. In one, corn stands tall but thirsty. Its leaves have curled, signaling stress. In the other, sorghum sways gently, its grain heads full and ready. The farmer watches both. He knows the numbers. He's run the calculations. He remembers the drought two years ago that wiped out half his corn. He remembers how sorghum saved the bottom line. As he heads back toward the farmhouse, he's already thinking about next year. About the seeds he'll buy, the fields he'll plant, and the water he'll try to conserve. The decision isn't sentimental. It's strategic. The land speaks, and he listens. And right now, in the dry American lands, that land is speaking clearly, grow what survives, grow what delivers, grow what endures. In this changing agricultural landscape, the debate between sorghum and corn is not about tradition versus innovation. It's about resilience. About meeting the demands of a hungry world with crops that can thrive even when the rain won't come. And in that battle, sorghum is no longer the underdog. It's a champion forged by the sun, strengthened by the soil, and chosen by those who know what it takes to grow against the odds.